um, something a little different. So kind of changing pace with a workshop. Now, obviously with a network, there have been some good opportunities for you to share ideas with each other over coffee, over lunch, things like that. But what we're gonna to try to get you to do now is make some connections uh, in this workshop on the topic of EMI. I recognize that not everyone here is an EMI researcher specifically. Some of you are working more specifically in global Englishes, uh, but obviously we've talked a lot about the relationship between these topics uh, in terms of internationalization agendas. Um, and you'll also recognize that the research directions of EMI also we see overlap with global Englishes as well. Um, so a lot of the ideas that have already been generated about the directions of research, um, even just this morning, uh, will all come into play, will come into your discussions in this workshop today. Um, and I also need to just point out a few things as well as if you, in case anyone looked at the abstract for this uh, session, you'll see that it was initially a presentation, um, but I'm really glad that it's been <laughs> changed into a workshop. Uh, because it's, I think, really important for us to be able to talk with each other, make connections in, in terms of kind of areas of similar interest. So I have uh, put my presentation on Mentimeter and wish me luck. I hope it works. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so yeah, the first thing I need to say is, yeah, the abstract that you saw for today's session is not what we're covering, <laughs> not, not what I'll be covering today. Um, but one of the points that I did uh, want to make was around this idea of I'm arguing for more longitudinal ethnographic mixed approaches and grounded theory research uh, that's designed to capture the experiences of EMI teachers and students in a way that allows for a more comprehensive understanding. Now, that, that was basically the kind of conclusion of the presentation. Um, but this idea about using, um, well, it's, it's thinking about the research paradigms that you're working within and how that informs what you're able to do with the research. So thinking about sort of theoretical frameworks and theoretical underpinnings of the research, thinking about how it makes you think about uh, your um, analysis of the data. So one of the one of the arguments that's been important. So I'm working with um, Tim Hampson, who's my newest PhD student. Uh, he's working on EMI in the Saudi context and is in Saudi Arabia now. Um, but one of the one of the discussions that kind of helped to form his study um, were was this kind of uh, paradigmatic dilemma, like how do I inform and how do I theorize EMI research? Um, and so one of the things that we discussed were this were some of the problems in terms of directions that we saw things going in, such as um, a certain reliance on a pragmatism or pragmatist paradigm um, that was basically uh, convenient <laughs> so rather than actually informing things or kind of pushing ideas uh, into useful directions. So that was the direction that that was going in. And so this is an open access article that's a QR code to it. So I do um, recommend that you check that out if you're interested in that side of things. Okay. Also, I had requests from people. I'm just going to give you a string of QR codes. <laughs> I had a request for people yesterday uh, about the presentation that I gave on English Media Instructor Practices and Higher Education International Perspective, the book that I co edited with Nicola. Um, and the slide, these are my slides from yesterday. So, um, a lot of the ideas uh, that I was interested in talking about with you for this session in terms of directions of research were informed by editing that book um, and kind of looking at research across these different regional contexts. I think, you know, the work that Carrie and the Oxford EMI, or sorry, EMI Oxford, make sure I get that right, EMI Oxford group um, worked on for the mapping uh, that Carrie just presented also right, reveal a lot of really valuable um, directions for research to consider. Um, but yeah, that's, those are the slides. Yeah, did that work? PDF? Okay, good. And then, yes. The other point is, uh, so editing that book, I also co-edit this uh, element series, and I just have to highlight it again, only because in conversations yesterday, I had quite a few people say, sorry, what is that? Uh, what, what is it, Cambridge Elements? And I thought, okay, I'm just gonna do it again. So <laughs> this is the this is the element, so it's Cambridge University Press element series. These are 20 to 30,000 word uh, kind of article, hybrid article slash mini books. Um, and the entire series is, 
free to download during the LENet conference. This is a huge deal. Cambridge have never done this before. Um, so please take advantage of it. And not just yourselves, make sure everybody else knows this as well. Um, a couple of titles I just had wanted to highlight uh, was the W. Les Agabasters on English Medium Instruction in Higher Education, but also Will Baker's on Intercultural and Transcultural Awareness in Language Teaching. But honestly, download all of them. <laughs> All right, and just share the links to you know to those elements on your network so that others can download those as well. It's going to run out. It, a promotional access period is going to run out at the end of the conference tomorrow. Oops. Okay, it should be stuck in the microphone like that. Okay. Um, the other editing thing <laughs> that I do uh, that informs uh, my ideas about directions for research uh, is as a co-editor in chief of the journal System. Um, System is. It has its origins in educational language education technology, um, but has branched out into as a kind of general applied linguistics uh, journal with a focus specifically on pedagogical implications. And as such, it's been very interesting to see the topic areas that have developed um, in, in interest. So this was actually a data that were gathered from Scopus uh, to show that the 10 most prominent topics in system include English medium and medium of instruction here. I'm not sure why lexical bundles is included, <laughs> but that was how it came up uh, with, with, with what Elsevier provided for me. Um, the other thing I think that's interesting to note here is that foreign accent also comes up as, as a kind of top, you know, top topic uh, for a system topic. So it's interesting to see that those do fit in um, among more than 100 different topics uh, in this list. And when we look at related journals as well, we can see uh, that these topics also, right, so English medium is also the, the related journals are MLJ and then teaching to support early, et cetera. Um, but those, yeah, those topics are also there for an accent, right? You can see um, just above medium of instructive, but also here, world English is textbooks on Hong English. These are just some of the examples of sort of uh, most cited and, and kind of gathering interest topics in these journals. So it is interesting to kind of think about where your research interests fit into um, publication interests, what people are reading and downloading. It is good to kind of check to see the journals that you're interested in sharing your research with. Um, what kind of focus areas do they have? Check their top cited and top downloaded to see uh, the directions things are going in. Be careful as well, though, because you can see at the top of this list as well as systems um, that things like foreign language anxiety uh, willingness to communicate, um, positive psychology. So these areas, language, emotion, right? These, these are really kind of big hot topics, but it's a little bit um, kind of reaching saturation. And we see this as well, actually, in a lot of the topics uh, related to EMI. Uh, so what I'd like to do is take advantage of this platform of Mentimeter to get you to, first of all, let me know what areas we're, we're, we're talking about. So what regional contexts or countries is your work focused on? All right, and you can actually enter, I think I said it, so you can enter like up to six responses. So if you can go to uh, www.menti.com, the code is 77552000. It should take you to this question where you then can answer this question multiple times. As you answer, the results should hopefully appear on the screen, fingers crossed. People have entered answers. I can't see anything. There we go. Okay. okay. I guess the thing that, yeah, is worth pointing out, I mean, yeah, it, it's certainly. Something like this, um, it, it takes a network, right, to be able to kind of pull together a lot of people to, to inform this kind of uh, thinking, right, about what we want to try to get at with this, with this. But you can see, you know, China, Japan, the, these, these are the context you know, earlier, uh, this is the work that I'm doing with Nicola and Carrie on surging EMI context. These are the areas, right, that are, that are just, you know, exploding with EMI research. And it's interesting to see them highlighted here as well. Brazil, Germany, United Kingdom, Turkey, I mean, you know, these these areas, obviously, when we're talking about EMI research, it's interesting to see United Kingdom in there, but fair enough, um, with, these, with these other contexts um, that we're seeing um, a certain amount of investment. I think Turkey is always an interesting one because it's, it, and it's been described as a quite a big growth area of EMI, 
um, without the same kind of yeah government in, yeah in, investments a bit yeah, yeah okay <laughs> um, yeah Thailand Kazakhstan um, yeah that's something on Poland um, yeah Romania Northern Cyprus Denmark Portugal France so a fair bit of Europe um, and then otherwise East Asia Thailand Vietnam South Africa is our only sub-Saharan Africa and Brazil is the only South American country. So this is um, typical, right? <laughs> uh, it's what the research shows us, uh, that you know, a lot of the focus that we have on, on EMI research is in these places. Obviously, we're going to be working in the areas that we are, that we have our, our relationships with, right? The context that we know, where we have personal experience and, and connections. Um, the research However, right, points to the need for exploration in other contexts. And so this is one of the points we want to try to think about in terms of directions for research in EMI. Okay. So um, I am going to draw just a bit on the most recent systematic review, um, comprehensive systematic review, I should say, because there have been other systematic reviews. But uh, yeah, uh, the one from 2018 uh, with, with, by Ernesto Vicaro and, and team at EMI Oxford, um, point out the need to understand a few things like whether content teachers have the necessary linguistic competence to teach through the medium of a second language, the level of English proficiency of students in higher education, uh, and the consequences of students being admitted with different levels of English proficiency, whether differing levels of students' language proficiency lead to inequalities of opportunity, particularly at transition points of the secondary to tertiary education where a selection process is used, and what kind of accommodation needs to be made for second language you know, my students to ensure their success in content acquisition. Now, that's from 2018, and we've seen quite a lot of response to some of these calls. And I think this is one of the things about seeing what direction things have gone in since 2018. Okay, so this was, now there were a lot of findings in the systematic review. And for those of you interested and, and have a keen eye, what you'll see is these are the ones that I selected that for me, I believe still need to be addressed. A lot of the other ones, um, what I've seen in terms of the, the research that's been published in journals like System um, and, and, and other journals that publish EMI research is that you know a lot of those other points that were raised from that systematic review have been addressed, but these are the ones that I feel still need to be addressed. And we are seeing some of them in, for example, thinking about our regional context, uh, the special issue that's forthcoming, in, or well, it's underway, right? We already have some content for the special issue on EMI and emerging contexts in system uh, that's published by, uh, that's being guest edited by he throws Dorian Yuxel and Samantha Curl. So keep an eye out for that in the system. You'll, so you'll see some of these points being addressed, but yeah, for example, throughout the educational phases, Asia and Europe dominate the body of research carried out on EMI. Africa is, poor, is particularly poorly represented in higher education research. Can I just check, special issue editors, Heath, Doyen, do you have Sub-Saharan African? We do, it's complicated. <laughs> Talk about why. We, we, not with system, but with other, Okay. It's very hard for you to be very supportive of research coming from the global south, but it gets very hard to get through the review process because reviewers are kind of not looking at the contribution it's making in terms of the context desperately need to understand. Uh, and so it's, it tends to be research that we are nurturing and supporting gets eroded away through the review process despite their sentence. <laughs> so there's a kind of that's the complication is okay. Okay. So there is the whole publication industry. Right, right. So I mean the public, yeah, we definitely need to be thinking about the publication, the commercial publication industry and the influences that has on our ability to access research from these places. Yeah, that they're not publishing this research. It's not necessarily that it's not happening. Maybe it's happening in different ways that don't you know, aren't reflected in the kind of systems that are in place for disseminating research in these commercial journals. So you know, things for us to think about in terms of how we access that, that research and how we think about that research, uh, where it exists, where it doesn't exist. Uh, EMI in higher education research is dominated by research questions re uh, relating to teacher and or student beliefs, perceptions, and attitudes towards its introduction and practice. Now, this is something I think as well as really interesting in what we've seen in the research is that we continue to have um, a, a 
the kind of teachers' beliefs, perceptions, right? We're seeing this with questionnaires. Um, and it's not to say that that research isn't valuable, it, but we, what we want to be thinking about is what are the constructs that we're coming up with now and how have they changed in terms of the building on what we've had so far? I think there's a real sense of just being careful to not reinvent the wheel, um, to make sure that you know, whatever existing research there is on, on student and teacher beliefs that yeah, we're, we're going somewhere from there. Um, yeah, I'm actually realizing that I'm about five minutes over time, so I'm not going to go through each of them. <laughs> Um, but yeah, each each of these points, right, they're kind of places for us to consider uh, extending the research, you know, addressing some of the existing problems in terms of either overdoing particular areas, under um, representing particular areas or core concepts or constructs related to EMI. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Um, the other important uh, literature review that uh, that came out that I highlighted in yesterday's talk uh, was the one for British Council. Um, and it was this point, I think, that I highlighted uh, yesterday as well, that the factors that influence the implementation of EMI include these driving forces behind its introduction, language education policies, provisions of language support, language proficiency requirements for students and staff. EMI programs can also vary in terms of how much English is used for teaching and learning in the curriculum. All of that points toward being wanting to take a closer look at what's really happening, right? Kind of how does all of this play out? So, you know, it's, it's sort of more support for these kind of more micro-focused um, studies. However, we have to be careful uh, with some of the particular problems um, of things getting too narrow. So on the previous slide, there was a point about um, how uh, specific single institution case studies, for example, or single classroom case studies um, can be too narrow. And so we want to make sure that we're looking at their bigger, broader implications. Okay, so what we're going to do for the workshop now, to make sure I give you enough time so that we can get through this and then get to lunch on time, um, is to think about these questions. What do we know about EMI, EMI implementation? Um, what do we still need to find out? All right, so what questions do we have about them? And we've had a lot of great examples already to this point in the conference of good questions for us to think about. Uh, and how can we research it? Think about you know, how will you actually carry out the study? Um, so what I'd like to do is get you to just do one more mentioning here, um, which is to yeah address the EMI topic areas that you're interested in researching. Um, you may also consider that the areas of EMI research that need researching that aren't necessarily the ones that are specific to your own interests. Maybe there are maybe you have recognition of, of other aspects of EMI research uh, that you think should be carried out. And we're going to see what we come up with here. And from there, we're going to break into groups and get to work on the task. Okay, new line implementation, language challenges, policy implementation, vocabulary, policy change, language support, phrase. Keep them coming. Implementation is the only word that's been in there more than once. Language challenge right there. Teacher training. Right? <laughs> okay, I think we're getting it. So what I was hoping for was, and, and, and I think I think we kind of got there a little thin, um, is to see what the kind of popular topic areas were, um, to break you into groups according to your interest in that topic focus area, right? So that you can work together on thinking about, you know, what are the research questions associated with that particular focus area of EMI research and how would you go about researching it? Um, so we've got, yeah, so I think the, the key ones here, so we've got, Teacher training, critical EMI, language uh, language challenges, 
and then identity. And it was it was it one of them? Assessment. Yeah. And probably language challenges and language support can like go together. Can go together. And language development. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Um, is actually we're you're going to break into groups according to these focus areas. All right. So let's. If we could all just take a look at the screen, we'll be able to see what the different groups came up with. Um, so this is the teacher, the teacher issues. I have to very quickly name the group. So yeah, teacher is issues. <laughs> um, but there's yeah, teacher training and teacher development. Um, but they're, they're obviously, yeah, these ideas about um, getting yeah specific areas of teacher training, I think, is really important. So EMI training syllabus, EAP training syllabus. Right, so that, that difference right between the two. Um, and then, yeah, evaluation, pedagogy needs, materials, yeah, and general teaching reflections. Excellent. Okay, so so everybody got the idea? You can right, get your ideas in there, these screens you'll download and definitely discuss this over lunch. Okay. <laughs> I won't I won't I won't brag this out much more. Um let's get the Critical EMI focused. All right. Interdisciplinarity, cultures and identities, post colonialism and access. Yeah, I think you know when we're thinking about critical EMI points, a lot of it is around these social justice issues. Um, so yeah, these certainly and make a lot of sense. Wanted culture and identity to be in the plural, recognizing that there's diversity for everybody in terms of having multiple cultures and multiple multiple cultures and multiple. Good, good, good. Yeah, this is there's going to be a little bit of overlap, I think, with the identity. On that one, let's see what the EMI assessment group. Language You're typing it. All right, we'll go back to language issues and identity. Oh yeah, sorry, I added and identity to the wrong screen. I meant to add it to your to assessment. All right, so we've got those all together, have we? All right, so language issues and identity. We've got, I think, you know, obviously work on language support is is continues to be an important area, and we should be watching the developments in that. Um, but it's also good to see, yeah, in terms of identities, um, imagine identities feature self, ident identity construction, so this overlaps right with cultures and identities. Um, investment theory, I think, is a really interesting one. That's good to see somebody's come up with that. Uh, in terms of the language issues, how, yeah, because there's, there's also, the idea of the cost benefit analysis. Um, but yeah, collaboration and language proficiency. Do talk about those over sandwiches. Okay. <laughs> EMI implementation. The biggest group in the room has two, <laughs> but they are very focused. Who makes decisions? What are the triggers? This is excellent. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, and some technical issues. Okay. <laughs> You can continue to add to these um because i'm not gonna i'll download the slides later right we're gonna we'll definitely break lunch um, but yeah i think it's, when it comes to you know, my implementation you know the decision makers obviously you know it's such an important part of it because it's not always necessarily um top down uh, that we've seen in a lot of the discussions and the research presented so far in this one okay um so we'll go back to you know, my assessment anything <laughs> Oh, you stuck with identity. All right. So, just, so assessment. Okay. So those are those are the screens that we're working with. Um, feel free to continue to download uh, to add to these kind of through lunch. All right, but definitely go and enjoy lunch. Um, I hope you enjoyed this workshop. I think there's there's a lot for us to kind of think about, but basically it is good to take advantage of these connections that we have with each other um, to reflect and to find where we match up with our interests and similarities in terms of focus areas. 